All right, this is turning out to be almost impossible to do. So how'd you get kicked off of YouTube? What was your last video? Oh, well, I covered the, the Whoopi Goldberg situation. Oh, are you stupid? Yeah, I guess I am. I guess covering the Whoopi Goldberg. This, this is why other people, other channels are covering it very lightly because some topics on YouTube are so just plutonium glowing hot that they're they're not worth covering or the only people who can cover them are really big channels like the quartering can cover almost anything. And the guy, the guy's a pro. He can cover things in a way you know, very, very carefully where smaller channels don't get that kind of leeway. So some things are, you know, covering them on YouTube. It's it's a trick. But there's, and this is an evolving story and it's so interesting. I, I don't know if it's interesting enough to get kicked off YouTube for, but anyway, so click the link to Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Discord, and the backup Discord because uh, there's a, uh, a stalker who is either stalking, I don't think they're stalking me so much as the channel and the people associated with the channel. Um, he he posts pictures of Laverne Cox like incessant, just non. It's it's the point where I think there's a screw loose. It, it, you know, it's kind of it's kind of I guess it's a is it a compliment to have a stalker? <laughs> uh, maybe I don't I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It's just I like I, I don't want to see. I saw I saw I saw so many pictures of Laverne Cox. I finally had to block the guy. Well, I can't take it anymore. This is like he's lecturing me on on pronouns and and why we need to use Latinx or something like. You're not going to convince me on this because it's dumb. All this stuff is really dumb. And Laverne Cox is is not good looking enough to be obsessed over. There are other people. Who, go find pictures of Jennifer Love Hewitt back when she was 20 or something. Um, join the email list uh, in case the platforms, you know, evolve and you need um, passwords to other things. Or support on coffee. Subscribe. Star in the links below. Uh, so Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, is just about impossible to do on YouTube. This um, this this started with uh, a, a comic book. Started with a, a comic book in Tennessee. Some school in Tennessee said, "Ah, oh, yeah, this comic book's stupid." I read it. It I went perused it online. It is a stupid comic book. It's not a good story. It's not well drawn. It's not. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just a dumb comic book that, for some reason, won a bunch of awards. I don't quite understand. So this school says, yeah, go read this at home if you want to read it. We, we don't need to have this as part of the curriculum or in the library. It's just stupid. It's not It's not a fair, unbiased, impartial representation uh, of the situation. And it's It's just, it's not very good. Um, there are better, there are better ways to educate people on, you know, history than... Um, a kind of a low rent graphic novel, so they said we're not going to have it, and um, I don't know. That caused some people to get a little upset, but it, I want to say it wasn't that big an issue. But then the view kind of blows oxygen on on it to to make a story out of it. And it wasn't that big a deal. The only reason they try to make it a big deal because like, oh, it's Tennessee, it's the South. Oh, those those dumb those dumb people in the South. We can just you know, it's this liberal coastal elite thing versus. Um, versus the rest of America, as as if it's yeah, L.A., New York, yeah, those are you're winning, L.A., New York. Oh, look how wealthy! Oh, look. Yeah, there's like one tenth of one percent in those cities who are doing very, 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 very well. Uh, I'd rather live in middle America. Take a look at New York and L.A. from videos from the '40s. You know, they post that crap on YouTube, these high def videos that you know remastered, and then look at it now. So you know, um, are the liberal coastal elites really, really? Go walk to San Francisco sometime, but uh, you know, have your pepper spray handy and watch watch where you walk because it's um, it's not a very nice place, and San Francisco hasn't been a very nice place in about fifty years. So, um, I uh, comic book, right? So Whoopi Goldberg and The View. It's like The View is a very lightweight pop culture, and Whoopi Goldberg, uh, to her credit, in the eighties and nineties, she was in a lot of pretty decent, funny hit movies. And also to her credit, she was physically fit back then. She did not have an ounce of fat on her. I don't know if she was, I don't know what happened where she just kind of gained, gave up and, and gained like 200 pounds. She just ate herself ridiculous. But back, I, I saw a movie a couple of years ago back to she filmed, um, I'm not sure which one. Maybe it was that the, the Nun movie. She was like 140 pounds had like 10% body fat or something. It was, um, she looked like she was like training for the Olympics or something. So anyway, she was a hit back then, but she's, you know, comedian. She's not hired as a political analyst. The view kind of does stuff. That's 
kind of like outside its ballpark a little bit. Like they're talking about politics, but they're not they're not giving um, a, a much less a fair and impartial analysis of it. But they're just giving a, such a surface level analysis of it. And anyone who who disagrees with them, it's an instant ad hominem. Like, oh, this is just a, a Trump thing. Just, just just Trump, 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 Trump. You guys are. You're just, I mean, I don't know if the, the audience, I, I get the feeling there's a lot of stuff on TV that is meant to be played in the background. And the, I kind of get the feeling the view is something like that. It's just five women that the customer base is familiar with, they're comfortable, they just enjoy hearing the sound of their voice while they're doing something else in the background. That's what a view feels to me. So their mistake number one was talking about this comic book, this graphic novel, which is not worth fighting over. It's not a good graphic novel. If it's in schools or not in schools, it's not the end of the world either way, but it's a it's a chance for, you know, New York, LA to Chicago to make fun of people in Tennessee. Um but they like I don't think Whoopi Goldberg understood the way of the world and hot button issues, which is weird because she's been in Hollywood for forty years to not understand like what landmines you need to um, you need to avoid. She didn't. Uh, she thought she had a certain level of privilege. Uh, she thought she was at the top of the purse puppy hierarchy. She's not. In fact, she needs a telescope to look at the people who, who are above her. Um, everything Hollywood tells you this narrative of you know white privilege. Obviously, it's a lie. It's all Bolshevik propaganda. Everything they say is a lie. It's not exactly the opposite world, but you can start assuming the opposite or assuming it's meant to destroy you uh, in some way. So, no, there's there's no white privilege. That's that's just Marxism. Uh, there is POC privilege, and Whoopi Goldberg has it, but then there's other privilege above that, um, and Whoopi Goldberg found out with this humiliating two weeks off. And it's funny to see all the people who are coming to her defense. Um, Mika Brzezhnechev, uh, what's that girl, MSNBC? She, uh, she's with that guy who looks like the, the Beavis and Butthead character. Uh, they're on MSNBC, and they're saying, like, oh, maybe cancel culture has gone too far if they're canceling Whoopi Goldberg. It's like, yeah, cancel, uh, you know, the, one of the most famous black women in America in his, uh, TV history uh, on you know, black during Black History Month, it's like well, who's above Whoopi Goldberg? Oprah Winfrey. That's kind of about it. Whoopi Goldberg is huge. She's got a pretty decent body of work behind her, and she's still been in Hollywood for like forty years. And he's like, oh, we're gonna cancel her. <laughs> oh, what's the reason you canceled her? Ah, uh, it's not for YouTube. <laughs> Maybe for Odyssey and bitch you. Anyway, so she learned, you know. Uh, animal farm, not all animals are, are equal. You don't get two weeks off if you're going to, if you, you can insult Christians and Europeans all you want. Um, that's open season. In fact, that's probably encouraged uh, is what you can see. Uh, go watch a, go watch a, go watch a TV for like, but don't watch it. Watch it with a notebook and teach it. Pr- pretend it's a class. Watch three hours of TV with a notebook. In fact, record it if you want. It would just take notes on what you see during the commercials, what you see during the shows, and you'll know you'll know the way of the world in a way that deeper a deeper knowledge than I could ever anything I could say would uh, instruct. Or go on Twitter and check out all those uh, verified hate accounts, blue check mark hate accounts on Twitter. Oh, you can't because they took down all those channels. Not that they didn't take down the hatred. They didn't take down the uh, the blue checks who were passing out this hatred against uh, the beautiful people of light. They took down the channels that screen capped and archived the hatred. That's Twitter for you, which... Get on Gab. Where was I going with this? It doesn't matter if it's the ACLU, the SPLC, or the ADL, John Green Ballot ADL. Um, he can pick up the phone or make a tweet if he wants to deplatform Alex Jones, Nick Fuentes, Nick Cannon... All it takes is a few tweets, and a, w- a week later, those people are going to be gone, or they're going to have like uh, quickly be put back in their place. Like Nick Cannon, he learned quickly. <laughs> watching Nick Cannon, that was a trip, man. That was a trip. Even wa- watching some of the memes Ice Cube was posting on Twitter. Uh, some people you can't cancel, like somebody like Ice Cube. He's, he's running an empire. You can't cancel him. Or even Joe Rogan, it would be very difficult to go after him. You could go after Spotify for sure, but Joe Rogan could start up his own website. Um, like Nick Fuentes has got Cozy.net. Uh, 
like Fuentes, Joe Rogan, Alex Jones, Owen Benjamin, uh, all these people who have been canceled. And there's a bunch of others I'm not going to name on YouTube because the algorithm. Um, all the people who've been kicked off YouTube, they could form their own platform to have live streams, chat like a Gab, incorporate it with Gab and Gab TV, figure out a way to monetize it. And like you would have an alternative community of people who are just tired of censorship. And like you could, you, people like Whoopi Goldberg and Nick Cannon, who's like, listen, we may not uh, agree with you people on all issues, but we want to have a platform where we can discuss those issues. And it's not going to be on YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter, or Facebook, or the mainstream. It's going to have to be somewhere else. It's like, oh, you yeah, just want to speech, hate speech. Well, first of all, what is hate speech? And then who gets to decide what gets to be censored? And that puts them on a the back foot. Because the, then they're in the position of saying, well, I want to be your master and determine what ideas you may entertain. Like, well, we don't need any masters. We're adults. We can entertain our own ideas. Anyway, I don't know if I can even bother putting this on YouTube. YouTube is such a, it's a weird place. Hey, I, you know, I respect the people who do make YouTube channels and are good at it, um, talking about, like, pop culture and stuff. But I see every, every pop culture I see through the lens of um, cultural Marxism, Bolshevism, because it's important to me. It's important. Um, it's important, depending on what kind of... I won't get into it. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next episode.